Stranger Things 4 running up that hill scene, behind the scenes. Stranger Things have been an absolute ride with season 4. To say it's had us on the edge of our seats would be an understatement. The stakes are at an all-time high this season as the entire town of Hawkins faces active danger. Like always, the responsibility to save the day falls on our group of teenagers. Amidst the funny quips and the ever-so-mysterious Upside Down, the Duffer Brothers have managed to deliver some memorable moments, all thanks to their excellent song selection. Yeah, we're talking about that scene with Max. Obviously, some serious effort went into pulling off that one, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a peek behind the curtain. Of course, that means a spoiler warning going forward. What scenes are we talking about? So for those of you who haven't caught on yet, we're talking about the scene where Max, played by Sadie Sink, is held psychologically captive by Vecna, the Mind Flayer's front general. The serial killer likes to torture his victims with their worst fears for six days before finally claiming their lives. And that's exactly what's happening with Max. Sadly, she feels like the team might not save her this time, so she's writing everyone letters. She even writes one to Billy, who, spoiler alert, died last season. It's here where Vecna and Max face off, all against the tune of Kate Bush's 80s hit Running Up That Hill. The Duffer brothers may have messed up Mike's character, but they definitely knew what they were doing with this one. After having watched the Mind Flayer brutally kill her stepbrother, Max is driven down a depressional spiral, making her the perfect victim for Vecna. And guess what the serial killer shows up as? Billy, of course. The mutilated slash Vecna says that he's here to end Max's suffering once and for all, perhaps referring to Max feeling suicidal, feelings she hasn't shared with anyone. Max, not ready for the end, runs off and finds herself in his lair. There she's about to be choked by his vines when, it, when a tear in the dark dimension reveals her friends on the other side, all of them desperately trying to save her. It's here she hears the faint sounds of Kate Bush's running up that hill playing that eventually allows her to break free from Vecna's hold. She runs towards the portal, dodging debris, and finally finds herself in Lucas's arms, who's more than relieved to have her back. He thought he'd lost her, and frankly, he wasn't the only one. Thank God Nancy and Robin came through when they did. How did the cast pull it off? Watching the scene, it's obvious to everyone that a lot of effort went into filming it. While Netflix was nice enough to release the behind-the-scenes footage for the clip in question, while everyone was waiting for Volume 2. And boy, did they put their backs into it. For starters, it's not CGI. Yeah, you'd expect any scene with a monster from another dimension to rely heavily on CGI. But that's not the case here, folks. A huge portion of Vecna's lair and even Vecna himself was built by the crew. Turns out Vecna wasn't really lying when he said that he's actually there. The special effects team is really working overtime. Not only that, but Netflix must be paying Jamie Campbell Bower some serious cash for him to stand around all day in that Vecna get-up. What's more, it took the makeup artist a total of six hours to complete, turning him from Instagram heartthrob to a mind-controlling serial killer from the upside down. Surprisingly enough, Jamie was super patient during the entire thing, and he didn't complain at all. And that's not all you don't know. That swamp scene where Max sees Vecna for the first time is all Sadie's first time seeing Jamie in his prosthetics. So that look of fear, it's pretty real. With its use of practical effects and set pieces, Stranger Things ditches the heavy CGI that plagues the mainstream media these days and presents hyper-realistic settings. A lot of this direction comes from director Sean Levy. He wanted to make the actors' jobs as easy as possible, according to him. The more you build, the easier you make it for the actors. Remember that shot where Max sees Chrissy strapped to that pillar of weird-looking vines? Yeah, that was an actual dummy propped up. Of course, the version we got to see had a VFX touch, but Sadie was reacting to a mannequin covered in glycerin. And as for Vecna's lair, it was full on a platform built on a soundstage. Everything you saw thanks to the special effects team, except for the red sky. That was a blue screen. Still, you have to give it to the team for putting in that many hours to building the set to absolute perfection. Even the winding staircase was real. A good decision on the director's part because the filming crew was able to use it to film some key shots. And that gooey mush Max was running through? Yep, that wasn't CGI either. Poor Sadie had to pull her weight through all that goo. She definitely had to take care of walking through it because it was really slippery. Still, despite all the precautions, she left with a couple of scrapes. How does Sadie feel about shooting the scene? Of course, our star actor has a thing to say about the iconic scene. Sadie sat down with castmates Finn, Wolfhard, Caleb McLaughlin, Gotten Matarazzo, and Priya Ferguson during Netflix's Geeked Week event. She revealed that she spent a lot of time in a harness. She also appreciated the directors for going with practical effects. Doing so made it easier for her since she wasn't staring at a man in a green suit like before. Despite the bizarre working conditions, Sadie said she had a good time. She got scraped up a little, and the shooting was intense, but she had fun overall. We have to say that she did an impeccable job acting out the scene. All the special effects and touch-ups 
would have fallen apart if not for Sadie's amazing acting skills. Although most of the set was in material form, some of it wasn't. Vecna's vines, for one, were not. Yes, the very vines choking Max were not real, and Sadie was essentially playing make-believe. She was straining her arm and neck to make it look like something was strangling her. A perfect job, we'd have to say. Also, the debris raining down during her escape was not real. That was just Sadie dodging imaginary objects. And let's not forget that Sadie was performing some dangerous stunts as well. She was dragged across the floor with a rope tied to her ankle. That cannot be fun. There's no denying that a lot of elements were at play here, which is why the team spent one week rehearsing that 4 minute and 11 second clip. The song fits Max's story. And there's no doubt that Season 4, Volume 1 of Stranger Things came with its fair share of gut-punching moments, whether it was the team's encounters with Vecna or Hopper facing off the Demogorgon in the pit. Still, somehow, Max's scene remains to be the most emotionally powerful and the most talked-about scene in the season. For fans who have their own stories of depression and suicidal thoughts, the scene is more than just a psychological face-off between Max and Vecna. Instead, the scene perfectly captures what it's like to battle depression and suicidal thoughts. For a show to do it without using the words themselves in the show is nothing short of impressive. Many share their own experience about how their favorite bands and songs manage to be a lifeline during the darkest moments. Netflix hasn't said anything about the matter, but the show's music supervisor, Nora Felder, is definitely on the same page. In an interview with Variety, she explained that in some ways, the scene could be understood as alluding more broadly to the inner struggles with private demons that many teens wrestle with during troubled times, especially when feeling alone and estranged from others. Interestingly, both the Duffer brothers and Nora thought of Bush's hit when it came to picking a Max song separately. Talk about coincidence. Brett Wien, who's the director of writing and entertainment outreach for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, had similar feelings. He didn't think that the Duffer brothers had the intention for the scene to be an allegory for depression and suicide, but that's what the fans are interpreting it as. And according to Brett, it might have something to do with the isolation and adversities brought out by the ongoing pandemic. However, that's not all that makes the scene special. To many, the fact that Max's friends remained unflinching during her times of crisis holds a particular value. Despite Max keeping her distance, they were paying attention to what songs she was listening to. This signifies the role of community in a person's healing. There was no need for the show to spell anything out. It was all there to be read by the fans between the song's lyrics and Vecna raining down hell. We're lucky they chose that song because there might have been a chance we would have gotten a different version of the scene. Kate Bush might not have agreed. Yeah, it's entirely impossible that Running Up the Hill might not be the song that lets Max break free from Vecna. Kate Bush, the woman responsible for the genius behind the song, is actually pretty picky with who gets to use her material. In fact, according to Sony Music Publishing's SVP of Creative Marketing, Film, and TV, Wendy Crowley revealed that they had to get her pages of the script as well as the footage so she could see exactly how her song would be used. But Nora, the show's music supervisor, was all too aware of these problems when she first thought of the song that would represent Max's emotional struggle across multiple episodes. Still, she kept her fingers crossed, and it looks like it paid off. The fact that Nora was adamant about convincing Kate to sign off also helped. She even admitted not going to sleep until the song got cleared. Brimming with determination, Nora prepared an extensive pitch to present to the English singer. They laid out elaborate scene descriptions, giving as much backstory as possible. And in the end, it all paid off. Of course, the fact that Kate was already a fan of the show also helped. Who doesn't want this song to feature on their favorite show? It's safe to say that Bush is particularly glad about her decision. The song that was a hit back in the 80s is now once again topping the charts. It's in the top 10 list across 34 countries and has seen an 8,000% increase in streams. Bush even wrote about how the fans are breathing new life into the song, and she absolutely loves it. Another scene in Volume 2. For those of you who haven't gotten around to watching Volume 2 yet, consider this your spoiler warning. The Duffer Brothers once again used Bush's hit song. And yes, Max and Vecna were the centers of it yet again. Elle was there as well, making things even more interesting. Sadly, the scene didn't have that satisfactory ending like the first one, with Max being crippled and all. Still, it was nice of the directors to stick to Max's storyline. They managed to get us amped up with a killer soundtrack. And with that, our video comes to an end. What are your thoughts on that Kate Bush scene? Have you had the chance to watch Volume 2 yet? If so, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and we'll see you next time with another video.